On Thursday, I go to school again. We have a new student in our class. Her name is Monica, and she is from Italy. At the beginning of the lesson, my teacher asks her how her life is. My teacher knows Monica from one year ago when she attended her class. That one was a class for beginners, and it was only for two weeks during the summer holiday. When Monica speaks, her English is beautiful. Her pronunciation is very good, and she is very fluent. My teacher is very happy, and she asks Monica, Where did you learn English so well? You speak very fluently. What school did you go to? Monica replies, I didn't go to school. I learned English at home. I used the advice and techniques that you taught us last summer. I did a lot of reading, shadowing, and thinking aloud. I tried to think more in English than in Italian. This is how I improved my English. The two weeks I spent last summer in your class helped me a lot. You showed me the way. I knew exactly how to work on my English every day. That's why I wanted to go to your class again. Because one year ago, I was a beginner. And now I can speak English. I want to learn from you again. My teacher is very happy when she hears these words. She thanks Monica for sharing her experience. It is all very interesting for me. I already know about the importance of reading. I also know the shadowing technique, but Monica also mentions thinking aloud. I don't know what it is, so I ask our teacher, What is thinking aloud? Our teacher says, It is a very simple and powerful technique, but you have to have strong motivation to learn English if you want to benefit from this technique. It is also good to know that for some people, this technique seems a little bit crazy. However, when you start to think aloud, your English can improve very fast. I say, I have a strong motivation. I don't care if the technique is crazy. If it helps, I want to learn it. Can you teach us this technique? Okay, it is actually very simple. You usually think in your native language all day, every day. It is normal. Now, you can start to think in English instead of your native language. When you start thinking in English, you can think aloud. It means that you actually say aloud what you think. That's all? I ask. It looks very simple. You said that it is a powerful technique. Why is it powerful? Our teacher says, maybe you can ask Monica. She has used this technique for a year, and maybe she can tell us what she has found out about this technique. Then our teacher asks Monica if she is willing to speak about her experience with thinking aloud. It is no problem for Monica. She says, when I started with this technique, it wasn't easy. I started with very simple sentences. For example, I can speak English. It is good that I can speak English. I want to be better. I need to practice every day. I don't know many words, but I can use these words well. I can express my ideas with these words. I can do this. This is great. The sentences were really simple. I realized that the sentences I thought in Italian were long and complicated. I wasn't able to say in English exactly what I was saying in Italian. I had to find a simpler form. Thinking in simple English was the hardest part, but after some time I got used to it. Then it became normal for me to think in English. Then something interesting happened. I met a man from Australia. He was on holiday in Italy. I was still a beginner, but we started to speak English. I could see that I was able to speak with him without big problems. My sentences were still simple and short, but because I had said them many times before when I was thinking aloud, I was able to speak. 
I didn't have to translate in my head from Italian to English as I did before using this technique. After the meeting with the man from Australia, I started to use thinking aloud even more. This technique helped me a lot. It improved my ability to express my ideas very much. I still use it every day. It is really a powerful technique. Our teacher thanks Monica for sharing her experience with thinking aloud. I decide to use this technique because I also want to be better at speaking. When you want to speak English fluently, think aloud. How to Learn Grammar After school, I go to the cafe where my job training starts. I don't know what to expect. I have never worked at a cafe. I am not sure if I can do this job. When I come to the cafe, I am very surprised. It is a modern cafe which sells coffee, tea, chocolate cakes, and sandwiches. My boss is only 25 years old, but she has been working at the cafe for more than two years. She has a lot of experience and she knows everything perfectly. She shows me how to prepare coffee, how to wash the dishes, and how to deal with customers. It is all new for me. I remember only about 20% of what she is telling me, but then she lets me do the work and corrects me when I make a mistake. She is very friendly, and I learn fast. After the first day at work, I am very tired. I had to learn many new things, but I am happy that I have a job. The next day is Friday, and I go to school again. One student asks an interesting question. Sometimes, when I speak, I'm not sure if I speak correctly. I'm not sure if I use the correct grammar. Can you help me? What should I do if I want to learn grammar? Our teacher says, Thank you for your question. There are two groups of students. Some students study English because they want to be able to speak, and some students study English because they want to pass an exam. For each group, there is a different approach. First, I will speak about those who need English for speaking. If this is your case, you don't have to study grammar a lot. When you learned your native language, you also learned it without studying grammar. You can learn English grammar naturally by using the language. The best way to learn grammar naturally is by reading a lot. Books are written in good grammar. When you read, you will learn grammar in the context of whole sentences. I also recommend shadowing. When you do shadowing, you practice the correct grammar. You do it naturally. You don't have to try to remember anything. You only copy sentences with correct grammar. If you need English for speaking, but also want to study grammar, you can visit www.gramerinls.com. This website shows what grammar is important for the different levels of English. You can find the most important grammar rules for speaking there. The second group of students are those who study English for passing an exam. If you are one of these students, I recommend studying specifically for this exam. It might be helpful to get the versions of this exam from the past years if they are available and train with them. Of course, your exam will be a little different, but the structure is usually the same or very similar. From my point of view, the versions of the exam from the past years are good training materials. Then I recommend going to the exam only when your results in the training materials are such that you could pass the exam successfully. Did I answer your question? Yes, thank you, says the student. This is good news. I don't like studying grammar, 
I learn English because I want to be able to speak. I don't need to pass any exam. I am happy that I don't have to study grammar much. I like reading, and I am happy that I can learn grammar by reading books. After the lesson, I go to the website www.grammarinls.com. It is really a nice website. There are grammar rules with examples for each level. They have three levels. These levels are 1,000, 2,000, and 3,000 words. In the afternoon, I go to my work. It is my second day, and I can already do a lot of things by myself, but my boss helps me whenever I need it. I see that my work is not very difficult. Also, I can practice English when I speak to our customers. When you want to have good grammar, read a lot. How to test your English It is Monday again, and I go to my school. Our teacher asks us what we did during the weekend. I say that I was at work on Saturday. I say that I can already do my work quite well. I say that I am happy when I can speak to our customers. When I speak, one of the girls in the class asks me, What happened to your voice? You sound very different from what we heard last week. Your pronunciation is very good. I smile and say, Thank you. I tried to do shadowing on Saturday evening after my work and for all of Sunday. I tried to speak like a native speaker. I know that it is still not perfect, but I also noticed a big change in my pronunciation. Our teacher asks if anybody else tried to practice shadowing. Three students raise their hands. One of them is the student from South Korea. He also likes this technique. One student says that she tried the technique, but her mouth hurt a lot after five minutes of shadowing, and she had to stop. She also says that she wasn't always able to repeat everything. Sometimes it was hard for her to keep up with the speed of the recording. Our teacher says, thank you for trying out this technique. If you do shadowing for the first time and your mouth hurts after five minutes, it means that you are doing it correctly. Your muscles need to be trained to this new way of speaking. It is like going to the gym for the first time. Your muscles can hurt if they are not trained. If your mouth's muscles hurt, you can take a break after five minutes and continue a bit later. With every five minutes of practice, your pronunciation should be a little bit better. Shadowing has other advantages, too. You practice the correct pronunciation in English, and you also practice other things such as intonation, rhythm, and connecting words in whole sentences. I know that at the beginning, the recording can sometimes be too fast. If this happens, you can repeat only the first or the last word in the sentence. With practice, you will be able to repeat more. I agree that it is true, I say. On Saturday, when I started with shadowing, it was quite difficult for me. Yet by Sunday evening, it was quite easy to repeat what I heard. Then I have a question for our teacher. I tell her that I looked at www.grammarinls.com. The website is interesting but I don't know what level is for me because I don't know how many words I know in English. Our teacher asks other students if they know how many words they know in English. It is interesting to see that nobody knows. We know that we are intermediate students, but we don't know how many words we know. Our teacher says, There is a website for people who study foreign languages. You can do a test there to find out how many words you know. The test has only two steps, and it is really simple. The name of the website is www.testlanguages.com. You can do the test every month, and you can see how much you have improved during that month. If you want, 
you can now take out your smartphones, go to that website, and do the test. I want to know how many words I know, so I do the test immediately. I see that I know 2,100 words in English. Most of the students know between 2,000 and 2,200 words. Only Monica and the boy from South Korea know 2,500 words. Our teacher says, so you can see that when you go to www.gramerinls.com, you should already know grammar from level 1 and level 2. You can start using grammar from level 3 because level 3 is for students who know between 2,000 and 3,000 words. Test your progress every month. How to handle mistakes On Tuesday, I go to school again. One student asks our teacher an interesting question. She says, I would like to practice speaking with people around me, but I am afraid of making mistakes. I don't want to look stupid. Can you help me? Our teacher says, Making mistakes is a very interesting topic. There are a lot of opinions on it. I want to show you what I believe is the best approach. I have a lot of experience with this because I also learned new languages. I still continue doing it. For example, now I am learning Spanish. When I speak Spanish, I don't care if I make mistakes or not. The reason why I don't care about mistakes is simple. When I learned my native language, I didn't care about making mistakes either. So why should I care now? My main goal when I use any language is to express my ideas. That is all. I know that when I read a lot, speak and do shadowing, my Spanish will be better and better. I know that this can sound incredibly simple, but it is my opinion. This is what I have found after many years of both teaching and learning languages. It works very well for me and many of my students. When I speak, I only concentrate on speaking at the moment. I know 1,500 words in Spanish. It is the level of a two-year-old child. Two-year-old children make a lot of mistakes when they speak, but they don't care about their mistakes. They continue using their native language, and when they are three years old, they make very few mistakes. When they are four years old, they already speak very well with hardly any mistakes. You should have the same attitude. Now most of you know about 2,000 words so it is absolutely okay to make mistakes from time to time. When you continue using English, there will be fewer and fewer mistakes in your speaking. It is not possible to get better without making mistakes. When you practice English, it is okay not to be perfect. Perfection comes with practice. Anybody who started to learn English started from the beginning, from the same level, which is level zero. Learning languages is like learning to play a musical instrument. It needs to be trained. When you start your training, it is not perfect at first, and you make mistakes. It is normal. Take it as a necessary part of your learning process. If you didn't go through this period of making mistakes, you could not get to higher levels. By continuing to do what you want to learn, the mistakes are gradually being eliminated. If you want to make fewer and fewer mistakes, do a lot of reading and shadowing. When you read, you can read aloud. It can also help you make fewer mistakes in real conversations. Care only about exchanging ideas. Don't care about making mistakes when you speak. You practice changing your thoughts into words, not learning grammar or words. You have other activities for that. Don't worry. Everybody who learns a foreign language makes mistakes from time to time, even famous people, bosses of big companies, or politicians. When you listen to these people on TV, you see that they don't care about mistakes. They care about what is important, and that is expressing their ideas. You should do the same. Does it make sense? 
The girl says, yes, thank you. If you don't want to make mistakes, do a lot of reading and shadowing. How to remember words. On Wednesday, I go to school again. At the beginning of the lesson, one student says, I started to read more. I feel that it is good for me. I can see how my grammar is better, but I have a problem. When I read, I look up a new word in a dictionary, then I continue reading. Sometimes, when I see the same word again only ten minutes later, I don't remember the word, and I have to look it up again. Can you help me remember the words better? Our teacher says that it is an interesting question, and she gives this explanation. It is absolutely normal that you don't remember the new word immediately. Usually, you will have to look up the word five times before you remember it. There will also be words that you will have to look up ten or fifteen times. These words are usually verbs. When we learn a new word, the word goes through phases. Only when you achieve the last phase do you remember the word very well. There are five of these phases. Let's have a look at them. The first phase is the moment when you see the word for the first time and don't know it, so you look it up in the dictionary. The second phase is the moment when you see the word again, knowing you've already looked it up before but still can't remember its meaning, so you look it up again. The third phase is the moment when you see the word again and have an idea of what it could mean, but you're not sure. For example, you know it is some kind of object, animal, or verb. The fourth phase is when you know what the word means when you see it but aren't able to recall it when you want to say it. This phase is when the word is in your passive vocabulary. The fifth phase is when you are finally able to use the word when you speak. Now you can see there are five phases altogether. Do you understand now why it's not possible to remember a new word the first time you see it? You would have to jump across all the phases in just one encounter. You need to see or hear every word several times, letting it go through all the phases until you reach phase number five. You can be happy not only when you learn a new word perfectly, but also when you progress from one phase to another. When that happens, you are closer to the final goal, which is to use the word without problems in everyday communication. All of this is interesting to me. I didn't know about these phases, but it is all logical. It also happened to me that I looked up a new word in the dictionary, but two minutes later I didn't know what the word was, so I had to look it up again. I felt stupid that I didn't remember the word. Now I know that it is absolutely okay not to remember the word forever when I see it for the first time. I need several encounters with the word before I can use it well. After school, I go to my football training. Our coach tells us that there will be a match on Saturday. The school team will play against another school team from Cambridge. Our coach tells me to come and play for the school team. I am very happy, and I am looking forward to the Saturday match. When you want to remember a new word, you need to see or hear the word about ten times. How to Improve Listening The next day, I go to school again. One of the students has an important question. He wants to know how to improve his listening skills. He wants to know what the best approach is. Our teacher says, Thank you for your question. Good listening skills are very important for communication. If you don't understand what people are saying, it will be difficult for you to speak with them. There are a lot of materials on the Internet for students of English. Some students can have a problem with finding the right listening materials for them. Let's have a look at what you should listen to. Don't understand yet? 
Look at what you already know. Be happy for every new sentence you have understood. Listening is the easiest way to learn. You don't have to do anything, you just listen. Did this information help you? Yes, says the student. Thank you. The listening topic is very interesting for me. Now I know what to do to improve my listening. When you want to be good at listening, listen for 30 minutes every day. What you need before you start. On Friday, we have an interesting conversation in our class. Our teacher has a question for us. She asks, What was your first reason to learn English? Do you remember the moment when you started to learn English? When did you start to be really interested in the language? I say that I remember the moment when I started to be interested in English. My teacher says, Can you tell us what happened? I say, Yes. First, I have to say that English wasn't always my favorite subject. I started to learn English in high school. At the beginning, it was very difficult for me. I didn't understand the structure of the language. It was illogical to me. I tried to remember words and learn grammar, but it was very hard. When I finished high school, I was still only a beginner. I couldn't speak English, and I believed that I would never learn this language properly. I simply believed that English wasn't for me. Then something happened. I always liked music, and when I was 20, I started to listen to the Beatles. I wanted to understand what they were singing, so I started to translate their songs. Slowly, I understood more and more. Then I met two ladies from England on a train. We had a simple conversation, but it helped me very much. I started to believe that I could learn English. From that moment on, I was working on my English almost every day, and I was getting better and better. Then I decided to go to England to improve my English. My teacher thanks me for sharing my story. She also tells me, Here is something very interesting about your story. At first, you didn't have motivation to learn English. Later, you had motivation. You wanted to understand songs. You can see that motivation is very important. When you have it, you can succeed. When you don't have it, it is very hard to be successful. Then our teacher asks everybody in the class about their motivation to learn English. The stories are very interesting. One girl's motivation is to be able to read historical books in original English. One student wants to be a professional tennis coach in England. He wants to speak perfect English before he starts his career as a coach. One woman wants to work for a big international company, and she needs English for her job. I can see that everybody has some kind of motivation to use English in real life or to get information from books. At the end of the lesson, our teacher asks us if we like English. I say, I didn't like English in high school, but now I like it a lot. I can see how useful it is to know this language. Our teacher says, This is another important factor when you learn a new language. It is good when you like something that is connected to English. It can be people, music, culture, or history. If you like English, it is easier for you to learn it. If you want to be able to communicate in English, it is good to know 3,000 words or more. If you don't like English, it is more difficult to find time to practice enough to reach the level of 3,000 words. I can agree with my teacher. Now I like not only the Beatles, but also my teacher and my boss, who is also English. I also like English humor. Now it is much easier for me to find time to practice English every day. On Saturday, I go to play football for my school team. We have some very good players on our team, and we win 3-2. to two. We are all very happy. We go to the pub after the match and celebrate our victory.
When you want to learn English, you need to have motivation to use English every day. How to learn 3,000 words. During the next lesson, one of the students asks our teacher this question. You told us that it is good to know 3,000 words. Where can I find these 3,000 words that are the most important for me to learn? My teacher replies, you can Google a list of the 3,000 most frequent words in English, but such a list will not help you much. When you start to learn words from this list, you will learn words outside the context. You will learn the words that are not connected with any story, and you will not learn what other words are connected with these words in sentences. You will learn them in your short-term memory. This system works only for some words. These are basic words which describe things and people around us. For example, mother, father, apple, blue, orange, dog, cat, book, car, house, city, boy, girl, water, cinema, or paper. These are words which represent something that you can easily imagine. For example, when you learn the word dog, you know immediately what it is. You have a clear idea in your head of what the word means. Yet when you want to learn words such as appreciate or suppose, this system doesn't work well. This is a problem many students experience. They start studying by using lists of words. It works at the beginning and they believe that they can learn English this way. They don't know that when they achieve the level of 1,000 words, they have to start using a different system. If you want to learn words from a higher level, you have to learn them from whole sentences. If you understand the meaning of a word in the context of a sentence, you will learn the word much better. You can learn words from lists, but there is usually a limit to how far you can go with this way of learning, and it is 1,000 words. This way of learning is also very slow. There are much better ways, which we have already spoken about, such as reading. For beginners, the best book to read is Robinson Crusoe in Simple English. You can find this book at www.robinsoncrusoeinls.com. It is the best book I know for learning new words for beginners. There is also one interesting rule that applies here. Every word that is important for you will come back into your life again and again until you learn it. This is very similar to the way we learn our own language when we are children. We don't study from lists of words, we just use the language, and important words keep coming into our lives again and again until one day we know what they mean. We keep learning new words this way all our lives. For example, the verb Google is a new word in many languages. We learned this word by using the language. We didn't learn it from any list of words. When you heard the word Google for the first time, you probably didn't know what it meant. Then you heard it again and again as the word became important to you, and after some time, you understood it. You can forget about lists of words. Learn new words by reading stories and other interesting texts. When you use English a lot every day, you will learn new words more effectively than from lists of words. Does it make sense? Yes, says the student. Thank you. After school, I go to my work. I already understand how to do my work very well. Things start to become automatic. I am happy that I understand my customers. It is not very difficult because the conversations are usually very similar. Our customers want some coffee or sandwiches, so the words are usually the same or very similar. My confidence grows, and sometimes I start to have longer conversations with our customers. Everything is good, but then something happens. It is a little bit shocking for me.
When you learn a new word, learn it as part of the whole sentence.